So you got a box lab Aquila, and you want to make that printer better. All right, well, we're going to show you how to update the firmware. That is actually a little bit difficult, and there's a, a step that is kind of not highlighted really well by the other videos that I've noticed. And besides the upgrading the firmware, I'll show you a couple of parts that you should print. I noticed that I printed about three or four different uh, filament guides, and this by far was the best one. It just slides into there. As you can see, I had to kind of adjust it a little bit afterwards, but it just slides into there. There is the, uh, the extruder head knob, you know, so you can raise and lower the extruder here. <coughs> and now let's get on with the firmware. Okay, we put our SD card in the computer. You can see I already have it set like this. This is the way you need to have that. You need to have one folder that says firmware that you put the bin file in, and the other one has to be your DWIN set. Okay, so go to Box Lab. Under support, download center. You're going to want to get your, I have a standard Aquila. If you have an Aquila X2, you could follow all of this. It is going to be so similar. You would just use different firmware. So for the Aquila X2, you're probably going to use N. I don't know why H is in there. I'm not 100% sure. That could vary. Don't quote me on that. But going back to a standard Aquila, I have a, a non-labeled plain first model, so that would be the G32. Download your firmware, boom. It'll come into your downloads. All right, you will extract that to your desktop. Bing, I, I've done all this already. I'm showing the video afterwards. You have You'll have two files on your desktop. Now you'll go to your SD card. You'll make a new folder. Call that firmware. I already have one, so I'm going to delete this. And then the DWIN set, it has to be extracted. You add that to the SD card by itself. The bin file you put in firmware. It has to be this way. Okay, now for the firmware upgrade, take your SD card that you got with this, your files that you've already put on, your DWIN set on one, and then your firmware, which has the actual bin file for the printer itself in its own separate folder. Okay, here we go. Put that in the printer. Turn the printer on, and you're going to see this go through a screen, check, green, updated. Shut that off, pull it out. I've taken my screen off and gotten this ready beforehand. You'll have to unclip this, lift it up from the left, seems to be easier. Take the four screws out from the back and jimmy this off carefully. Plug it back in. On the back side of this, you have your SD reader for the printer. You want to put that in, and when you turn this on the second time, you're going to see a blue. Here, I'll do it. Now. Put that in there. Turn your printer on. You're going to see it turn blue and then to a red block afterwards. At the red block, your screen is now updated to the same firmware that your printer is. Done. Shut it off. Remove 
with that SD card. Hopefully, of course. So when we turn this on, I can show you we are no longer at the version 1.2.1 firmware. One point two point four. It is downloaded and installed. And now we can go ahead and get our Vox Lab put back together. I think the firmware was a good upgrade. As far as I know, the, the I, I think it was just like a thermal runoff bug fix. Could be wrong there. I, I really don't know what the what all the upgrades would be. Back to getting good prints out of my slightly upgraded Vox Lab Aquila. And I'm now running 1.2. Point four firmware. So here's a little collection of the items that I've printed so far on that. Um, a few grinders and my favorite. These little characters for my daughter. She is just loving it. If you can see the quality that I am getting. But it is pretty good quality for this printer. I'm liking it more and more every time I use it. All in all, for a $199 price, uh, you really can't complain about this printer. As soon as you understand bed leveling and you know exactly how to print the, the proper temperatures and, and speed, you would probably have to adjust it and toy around with it. You can make some really good quality prints with this. I'm pleased.